Hi everyone. So continuing with the grade 9 CBSC English poems, today we're going to look at No Men Are Foreign by James Kirkup. James Kirkup was born in England. He was a prolific writer, which means he did a lot of writing and in many genres. And uh, besides being a poet, he was also an accomplished drama writer. He wrote prose. He was a fine travel writer and also a distinguished auto autobiographer. The title immediately gives away the poet's message. He firmly believes that all men are equal. He believes in universal brotherhood. He doesn't believe in boundaries that divide us. He believes that across all the borders of different countries, we're all humans, we all one. So let's begin with the first stanza. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign, beneath all uniforms. A single body breathes like ours. The land of our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. He reminds his readers that all men are equal beyond the borders, beyond the national boundaries, race, caste, creed and faith. We are all the same. We're all made of the same flesh, bone and blood. The poet uses an interesting analogy of uniforms here and uniforms of course are metaphorical of soldiers so the poet is trying to say that beyond our military uniforms beyond the various and different colors that different countries have for their um, military we're all the same underneath that uniform we all breathe we all need the same air and oxygen to live and survive the analogy of uh, uniforms is also an extended metaphor. He's not just talking about the, the color of the military uniforms, but probably even about the different colors of the human race, that even though we are different in our colors, but we all are the same. We're all made of the same flesh and bone. In the last two lines of the stanza, the poet clearly states that we all walk the same land. We all walk on earth. It's not like the foreigners walk on a different planet. And eventually we all meet the same fate. We will all eventually turn to dust beyond our breathing and living and you know walking the land. Eventually we will all turn to dust and Let's look at the powerful poetic devices that the poet has used to um, convey his message vividly. Um, he repeats the word no, of course, to emphasize on his message of brotherhood and to tell us that he firmly believes that everyone is equal. Uh, the word uniform is, of course, metaphorical for um, different nations and uh, people. Uh, he's used alliteration, the use of consonants in body breathes, again to emphasize that we're all the same, we all need the same air to breathe. Moving on to the second stanza. They too, aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvests, by war's long winter starved. Their hands are ours, and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. The poet begins with the pronoun they, which of course refers to people living in different countries or here the foreigners. And he, he clearly says that people living in different countries and nations, they too use the same elements of nature like sun, air and water. And if mother air, nature can bestow upon them the same elements and give them the equal measure of everything, then who are we to divide people? During peaceful times, we enjoy the fruits of our harvest. We all have the same goal, to sow and to reap a good harvest. And during winters, when we are deprived of things, we all face the same famine and hunger. In the next line, the poet uses a powerful metaphor. He says, their hands are ours. The poet states that no matter where you are, we all have the same strength and skill and we all have to use the same strength and skill to sow and reap. So till now the poet has stated that we 
breathe the same air we walk the same land we use the same elements of nature we uh, have the same feelings then why do we discriminate against each other to the poetic devices used in this stanza the poet has used something called polysyndeton which is probably new to you and it is a literary technique technique in which conjunctions for example and but or are used repeatedly in quick succession so the poet has used this in the first line when he says aware of sun and air and water this is probably to give that listing effect and also the fact that there are so many similarities amongst all of us he's made use of alliteration where he uses consonants and says was long winter of course to add to the auditory imagery and paint a vivid picture of that scene in the reader's mind now uh, their hands is of course metaphorical of hard work and it is um, also metaphorical of the skill that is common amongst everyone all the people around the world um he's used transferred epithet you can read the definition um here peaceful harvest he's not referring to the um harvest being peaceful but rather to the social and political conditions of that area moving to the next stanza remember they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love in every land is common life that all can recognize and understand poet once again starts with the word remember he repeats the word remember in order to emphasize and remind his readers that even physically uh, you know we are the same we have the same physical features we have the same um eyes and uh, it has the same function we all sleep and wake up and uh, god himself has made us all in one image then why are we all hell bent on destroying one another in fact beyond our physical features we all have the same strength and we can either use this strength constructively to love and live peacefully or hate and destroy each other He goes on to saying that in every land is common life so beyond our boundaries and walls and fences we all have that common thing which is called life we all have the same purpose to live our lives every day and if we can understand that one secret that it is life that binds the entire human race together look at the poetic devices in this stanza he's used repetition he repeats the word remember again to urge his readers to uh, ponder over his message um of course there's use of enjambment it's been used in lines 1 and 2 to emphasize on his point there's use of alliteration he uses consonants and sleep and strength and uh, the repetition of the s sound is also called sibilance again it adds to the auditory imagery and it captures the reader's attention and on to stanza 4 let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers it is ourselves that we shall dispossess betray condemn remember we who take arms against each other and the poet here wants to remind his readers then when we hate other people or who we call foreigners when we hate people from different countries and provinces then we actually commit a crime against ourselves we, so in spreading hatred and violence and bloodshed we are actually being disloyal to ourselves to humanity and creating this violence it's not just the victims that will suffer but it's also the culprits that suffer when you take up weapons against each other it's the suffering will be on both sides talk of those legendary wars sometimes they just seem futile because there was so much misery and um, sadness created by those wars it was almost like they were like crimes against humanity the poetic devices in this stanza um so the poet has used enjambment in the first two lines because he's overwhelmed and he's eager that um, to convey his message he's used the word uh, remember once again and uh, again to urge his readers to think about his message to ponder over it 
and um, yeah, uh, he's used alliteration. Uh, he's uh, made use of consonants and we who because he wants to emphasize and on the fact that it is we we are responsible for our own misery. It, into the last stanza, it is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. Again, the poet says that when we commit crimes against each other in terms of war and bloodshed and violence, then it is the entire human earth that we corrupt and defile and pollute. Hells of fire here um, is an extended metaphor for consequences of war which are burning killing bombing and destroying literally of course you know all of that has its consequences it pollutes the air it dirties the air and metaphorically of course it creates animosity between people it boundaries and walls they can't divide air so air doesn't belong to a particular country this air belongs to the entire human race and when we commit crimes against other people we are also polluting our air and that's what the poet is trying to say that we're all the same we all live on the same land and breathe the same air he ends the poem beautifully in the last two lines he does a play on words he changes the order of the words where he says Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange. Um, so this play on words is again to emphasize on his point, is to capture the reader's attention with the poetic devices in this stanza. Uh, the poet uses enjambment in lines two and three, where he is probably overwhelmed and he can't figure out why humans create uh, or commit crime against each other when we're all the same we all have the same feelings and we suffer the same pain and agony and then of course he's used extended metaphor where he says uh, our hells of fire and dust uh, which uh, of course refer to the consequences of war like hope we can all take away a little message of peace in our hearts and create that peace around us and uh, I'll meet you next time with another poem. Until then, study hard, be good. Bye.